Ear pain, Wikipedia article audio. Ear pain, also known as earache or otalgia, is pain in the ear. Primary ear pain is pain that originates from the ear. Referred ear pain is pain that originates from outside the ear. Signs and symptoms Pathophysiology Primary ear pain Referred pain Differential diagnosis Risk factors External ear Otitis externa Mechanical obstruction Less common causes Middle and inner ear Acute otitis media Trauma Referred pain to Diagnostic approach Management Antibiotics Procedures Other management Epidemiology Ear pain is not always associated with ear disease. It may be caused by several other conditions, such as impacted teeth, sinus disease, inflamed tonsils, infections in the nose and pharynx, throat cancer, and occasionally as a sensory aura that precedes a migraine. Ear pain can present in one or both ears. It may or may not be accompanied by other symptoms such as fever, sensation of the world spinning, ear itchiness, or a sense of fullness in the ear. The pain may or may not worsen with chewing. The pain may also be continuous or intermittent. Ear pain due to an infection is the most common in children and can occur in babies. Adults may need further evaluation if they have hearing loss, dizziness, or ringing in the ear. Addition red flags include diabetes, a weakened immune system, swelling seen on the outer ear, or swelling along the jaw. The ear can be anatomically divided into the external ear, the external auditory canal, the middle ear, and the inner ear. These three are indistinguishable in terms of the pain experienced. Many different nerves provide sensation to the various parts of the ear, including cranial nerves V, 7, 9, and X, and the great auricular nerve. These nerves also supply other parts of the body, from the mouth to the chest and abdomen. Irritation of these nerves in another part of the body has the potential to produce pain in the ear. Irritation of the trigeminal nerve is the most common cause of referred ear pain. Ear pain has a variety of causes, the majority of which are not life-threatening. Ear pain can originate from a part of the ear itself, known as primary ear pain or from an anatomic structure outside the ear that is perceived as pain within the ear, known as secondary ear pain. Secondary ear pain is a type of referred pain, meaning that the source of the pain differs from the location where the pain is felt. Primary ear pain is more common in children, whereas secondary pain is more common in adults. Primary ear pain is most commonly caused by infection or injury to one of the parts of the ear. Environmental factors like smoking and having more than 3.5 alcoholic drinks a day can increase the risk of having a serious cause of ear pain. Medical conditions like diabetes and coronary artery disease are also risk factors. In addition, so is being 50 years and older. Second-hand smoke may increase risk of acute otitis media in children. For otitis externi, swimming is the most significant risk factor. Other risks factors for otitis externi include high humidity in the ear canal, eczema, or ear trauma. Many conditions involving the external ear will be visible to the naked eye. Because the external ear is the most exposed portion of the ear, it is vulnerable to trauma or environmental exposures. Blunt trauma, 
such as a blow to the ear, can result in a hematoma, or collection of blood between the cartilage and perichondrium of the ear. This type of injury is particularly common in contact sports such as wrestling and boxing. Environmental injuries include sunburn, frostbite, or contact dermatitis. Less common causes of external ear pain include Otitis externa, also known as swimmer's ear, is a cellulitis of the external ear canal. In North America, 98% of cases are caused by bacteria, and the most common causative organisms are Pseudomonas and Staph aureus. Risk factors include exposure to excessive moisture and disruption of the protective cerumen barrier, which can result from aggressive ear cleaning or placing objects in the ear. Common symptoms include itching, swelling of the ear canal, ear drainage, and pain with movement of the external ear. Malignant otitis externa is a rare and potentially life-threatening complication of otitis externa in which the infection spreads from the ear canal into the surrounding skull base, hence becoming an osteomyelitis. It occurs largely in diabetic patients. It is very rare in children, though can be seen in immunocompromised children and adults. Pseudomonas is the most common causative organism. The pain tends to be more severe than in uncomplicated otitis externa, and laboratory studies often reveal elevated inflammatory markers. The infection may extend to cranial nerves, or rarely to the meninges or brain. Examination of the ear canal may reveal granulation tissue in the inferior canal. It is treated with several weeks of four and oral antibiotics, usually fluoroquinolones. Acute otitis media is an infection of the middle ear. More than 80% of children experience at least one episode of otitis media by age three years. Acute otitis media is also most common in these first three years of life, though older children may also experience it. The most common causative organisms are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, and Moraxella catarralis. Young children, particularly children that are not yet talking, may only have nonspecific symptoms, such as increased fussiness or fever. Otitis media often occurs with or following cold symptoms. The diagnosis is made by the combination of symptoms and examination of the dimpanic membrane for redness, bulging, and slash or a middle ear effusion. Complications of otitis media include hearing loss, facial nerve paralysis, or extension of infection to surrounding anatomic structures, including a variety of conditions can cause irritation of one of the nerves that provides sensation to the ear. Conditions causing irritation the trigeminal nerve. Conditions causing irritation of the facial nerve or glossopharyngeal nerve. Conditions causing irritation of the vagus nerve. Conditions causing irritation of cervical nerve C2-C3. While some disorders may require specific imaging or testing, most etiologies of ear pain are diagnosed clinically. Because the differential for ear pain is so broad, there is no consensus on the best diagnostic framework to use. One approach is to differentiate by time course, as primary causes of ear pain are typically more acute in nature while secondary causes of ear pain are more chronic. Acute causes may be further distinguished by the presence of fever or the absence of fever. Etiologies leading to chronic pain may be broken down by the presence or absence of worrisome clinical features, also known as red flags. If red flags are present it may be necessary to do additional workup such as CT imaging or biopsy to rule out a more dangerous diagnosis. 
Such diagnoses include malignant otitis externa, mastoiditis, temporal arteritis, and cancer. It is important to note that while the presence of a red flag does raise suspicion for one of these four disease, it does not guarantee a diagnosis as any one symptom can be seen in a variety of situations. For example jaw claudication can be seen in temporal arteritis, but also in TMJ dysfunction. If there are no red flags other sources of referred ear pain become more likely and are reasonable to pursue. Otitis externa asterisk Asterisk indicates a can't-miss diagnosis or a red flag. Management of ear pain depends on the underlying cause. Bacterial infections of the ear are usually treated with antibiotics known to cover the common bacterial organisms for that type of infection. Some causes of ear pain require procedural management alone, by a health professional or in addition to antibiotic therapy. Auricular cellulitis, a superficial infection of the ear that may be precipitated by trauma, an insect bite, or ear piercing. Redness, swelling, and warmth of the ear develop rather quickly. Treatment includes antibiotics, perichondritis, infection of the perichondrium, or fascia surrounding the ear cartilage, which can develop as a complication of untreated auricular cellulitis. Perichondritis also presents with ear redness, swelling, and tenderness, but spares the ear lobes because they do not contain cartilage. It is important to identify and treat perichondritis with antibiotics to avoid permanent ear deformities, relapsing polychondritis a systemic inflammatory condition involving cartilage in many parts of the body. Multiple episodes of pain and inflammation of the ear cartilage, often involving both ears, are a common aspect of the condition. The severity and prognosis of the disease varies widely. Mastoiditis, infection of the air cells in the mastoid process. The mastoid area is located right behind the ear and typically shows the classic signs of infection including redness, swelling, warmth, and pain when pressure is applied to the area. The swelling may cause the ear to be pushed out of its usual position, petrositis, infection of the petrous portion of the temporal bone, labyrinthitis, meningitis, subdural abscess, Brain abscess. Temporomandibular joint syndrome, inflammation or abnormal movements of the joint between the jaw and skull. People tend to experience increased pain when chewing, limitations in jaw motion, and slash or jaw clicking. These disorders are most common in women of childbearing age, and are uncommon in children younger than 10 years old. Myofacial pain syndrome, pain in the muscles involved in chewing. There may be certain parts of the muscles or tendons that are especially painful when pressed, trigeminal neuralgia, attacks of shooting pain down the face lasting a few seconds, which may be triggered by touching the face or temperature changes, dental pain from cavities or an abscess. Tonsillitis infection slash inflammation of the tonsils, post-tonsillectomy, pain following surgical removal of the tonsils, pharyngitis, infection slash inflammation of the throat, sinusitis, parotitis, inflammation of the parotid gland, the salivary gland right in front of the ear. GERD, myocardial ischemia. Cervical spine trauma, arthritis, or tumor, temporal arteritis, an autoimmune disorder leading to inflammation of a large artery in the head, which can produce symptoms including vision changes, pain with chewing, and headache. This condition tends to occur in adults older than 50. Rapid treatment with steroids is important to prevent blindness. 
Uncomplicated acute bacterial otitis externa is treated with cleaning of the external auditory canal, oral analgesics, and topical antibiotic therapy active against Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus, and gram-negative bacilli. If there is immune compromise, systemic antibiotics are considered for treatment. For symptoms that are not responsive to treatment within 10 days, a physician should evaluate for necrotizing external otitis. Necrotizing external otitis is potentially fatal and should be evaluated by an otolaryngologist with admission to the hospital and for antibiotics. Acute folliculitis is treated with systemic antibiotics active against gram-positive bacteria. Auricular cellulitis is treated with antibiotics active against Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococci and warm compresses. Perichondritis is treated with oral antibiotics active against gram-negative bacteria and gram-positive bacteria, irrigation, warm soaks and referral to otorhinolaryngology. If a foreign body is present in the cartilage, this foreign body should be removed. Chondritis is treated with four antibiotics, hospital admission, and referral to otorhinolaryngology. Acute otitis media self-resolves within 24 to 48 hours in 80% of cases. If it does not self-resolve, AOM thought to be caused by bacteria is treated with systemic antibiotics active against Streptococcus pneumoniae, Moraxella catarralis, and Haemophilus influenza. If symptoms do not respond to a week of treatment, a physician should evaluate for mastoiditis. Acute mastoiditis is treated with admission to the hospital, otorhinolaryngology consultation, and empiric 4 antibiotics active against Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, Moraxella catarralis, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Cases with intracranial involvement are treated with a mastoidectomy with meringotomy. Suppurative otitis media is treated with oral antibiotics active against Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza. There is a risk for tympanic membrane rupture. Sinusitis can have referred pain to the ear. Treating the underlying sinusitis will treat the ear pain. Keratosis obturans is treated with removal of impacted desquamated keratin debris in the ear canal, chronic perichondritis and chondritis that continues to be symptomatic despite appropriate antibiotic management may require surgical debridement. Surgical drainage could be required, bullous myringitis leads to the development of bully on the tympanic membrane that can be punctured to give pain relief. Foreign body in the ear canal can cause pain and be treated with careful removal. Infected sebaceous cyst is treated with incision and drainage of the cysts, oral antibiotics, and otorhinolaryngology assessment. Relapsing polychondritis is an autoimmune disease treated with immunomodulating medications. Temporomandibular joint dysfunction can lead to referred ear pain and can be initially treated with a soft food diet, NSAIDS, application of a heat pack, massage of local area, and a referral to a dentist. Myofacial pain syndromes are initially treated with NSAIDS and physical therapy. Local anesthetic injection into the muscle trigger point can be considered in severe cases. Glossopharyngeal neuralgia is treated with carbamazepine. Given the variety of causes of ear pain, some causes require treatment other than antibiotics and procedures. Two-thirds of people presenting with ear pain were diagnosed with some sort of primary otalgia and one-third were diagnosed with some sort secondary otalgia. A common cause of primary otalgia is ear infection called otitis media, meaning an infection behind the eardrum. The peak age for children to get acute otitis media is ages 6 to 24 months.
One review paper wrote that 83% of children had at least one episode of acute otitis media by three years of age. Otitis externi peaks at age 7 to 12 years of age and around 10% of people has had it at least once in their lives. Cerumen impaction occurs in one out of every 10 children, one in every 20 adults and one in every three elderly citizens. Barotrauma occurs around one in every 1,000 people. Of people presenting with ear pain, only 3% was diagnosed with eustachian tube dysfunction.